The Atlantic and Pacific Oceans are the two largest oceans on the planet, which cover half of the Earth's surface. They also make up the planet's largest habitat with a variety of flora and fauna. To this day, we still aren't quite sure just how many species live in the depths of these oceans. Some scientists have estimated that there are between 700,000 to 1 million types of marine life. It's also well known that these two oceans have many mysteries that are yet to be uncovered. One of those mysteries is why don't the waters of these two oceans mix? Is there something that prevents them from mixing? Well, it turns out there are plenty of factors that we'll be exploring in today's video. Stay tuned! The Pacific Ocean is the world's largest and deepest ocean, holding approximately 63 million square miles, or 165 square kilometers, of the Earth's water. It also has an average depth of 46,850 feet, or 4,280 meters. The Atlantic Ocean comes second, with an area of around 41 million square miles, or 107 million square kilometers, and a depth of 12,000 feet, or 3,646 meters. Since the Pacific Ocean lies between the U.S. in the east and Oceania and Asia in the west, while the Atlantic sits between Europe and Africa in the east and the U.S. in the west, these two great oceans actually meet. They meet at Cape Horn, a rugged headland at the southernmost part of Tierra del Fuego archipelago of southern Chile. This cape is difficult to navigate since it has rough currents, strong winds, and unpredictable weather. Many believe that this is due to the two oceans meeting each other at this point. The main question we've been wondering about is whether these oceans can actually mix. Throughout the years, videos and pictures show a clear division between the deep blue and dark green ocean waters. Many have pointed out that they show the division between the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean at their meeting point, but how come they don't collide into one big body of water? When you look at a map of the Earth, you see all the oceans, seas, and even some rivers in this world are connected. You might think that each one mixes with the next one, but in reality, this is much more complicated. The separation line between these oceans is a clear indication that not all water mixes in every situation. If you take a close look, it might appear as if though the two are combined, but there is a distinctive border between them that appears like a huge wall dividing the two oceans. Due to the different densities and currents of the two oceans, it appears as if though the two oceans are divided, not mixing at all. In theory, they do mix, but not how you think they would. Given that the density and the saltiness of the two oceans are quite different, it causes them to act in different ways. This is why there's a border between the two. However, things are more complicated when it comes to explaining what's going on. We're going to look at the two most important factors, the salinity and the halocline. The salinity is the amount of salt dissolved in a body of water. Each ocean has a different level of salinity. This is created due to many seawater chemicals from rivers carrying chemicals dissolved out of rock and soil. The main chemical is sodium chloride, which is commonly known as salt. The Atlantic has a higher percentage of salinity than the Pacific, meaning that it is way saltier than the Pacific. Salinity levels can affect the way the oceans mix. More salt means that the water in the ocean is denser, meaning that when it comes to the two combined, it will create a barrier known as a halocline. So what's a halocline, you might ask? A halocline presents a zone in the ocean water in which salinity changes rapidly with depth located below the well-mixed, uniformly saline surface water layer. This creates a barrier between each ocean. If you want to see it more clearly, you can do a simple experiment at home. Just mix tap water with salted water. You'll notice a barrier between them right away. Well, in the depths of the oceans, this vertical barrier is much more fascinating than the one you would witness at home. Halocline's appear when the water in one ocean or sea is at least five times saltier than the other. Another factor is the temperature or thermocline. If one ocean or sea is much warmer than the other, it can cause a layer between the colder and the warmer water in the ocean. While many factors lead to the Atlantic and the Pacific oceans not mixing, these are just a few of the most important ones. Another factor is inertia. Inertia is the tendency of an object to resist change in its current state. The global winds that drive surface currents are affected by several factors, one of which is the rotation of the Earth. The Earth's rotation causes ocean currents to turn in a process known as the Coriolis effect. And because of this effect, the ocean currents deflect to the right of the northern hemisphere and the left in the southern hemisphere, while the wind pushes the water to the very surface of the ocean. The water molecules moved by the wind current drag the water molecules just below the surface. This result is that the layer of water just below the surface also moves. That second layer moves the water molecules below it, and this continues to a depth of about 330 feet or 100 meters with each increase in depth, resulting in a slowing down of the water. So when you think about it, if the water molecules are moving in opposite directions when the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans meet, these bonds between the molecules are so strong that they don't allow them to be broken by other water molecules. 
When the two oceans meet, their molecules simply push away from each other instead of sticking together, resulting in a phenomenon that appears as if the oceans are divided. The two oceans also have different surface tensile strengths, not allowing them to mix. It is believed that eventually the two oceans will start mixing, but only time will tell. However, these oceans aren't the only case where the two bodies of water don't mix. One of the many cases is the North and Baltic Seas in Europe. The phenomenon of the water exchange between the Baltic and the North Sea attracted the attention of numerous scientists because their waters meet without mixing. The same thing occurs with the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. This can be seen at Skagen, Denmark, the meeting point of the two seas. They clash with each other as if they're somehow separated. The waves of the North Sea are rather gusty, and its waters are dark, while the Baltic Sea is known for its calm and clear waters. As a result, the place where they meet can be vividly seen due to the sharp contrast between the waters of the two seas. Even though they don't mix, their waters exchange when the Baltic Sea's varied water meets with the North Sea's intense waves. The waves of the Baltic Sea are lower than those of the North Sea, and the temperature of the sea is changeable because of the climate change, which causes sudden storms in connection with the wind. So the difference between the two seas cause them to appear, as if a huge wall separates the two. The mix of the fresh and salt water also contributes to this phenomenon, which allows for a halocline to occur and prevent them from mixing, the same thing that occurs in the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. When you look at all the waters on this planet and see their meeting points, you will soon see that many have the same phenomenon of meeting but not mixing. Another such example is the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. The Strait of Gibraltar connects them and separates Spain on the European continent from Morocco on the African continent. The Mediterranean Sea covers an area of about 970,000 square miles or 2.5 million square kilometers, representing 0.7% of the global ocean surface. As the water flows in and out of the Mediterranean, two currents are formed in the strait. An upper layer of the Atlantic waters flow eastwards, into the sea, over a lower layer of saltier and heavier Mediterranean water flowing westward into the ocean. As the sea and the ocean merge, a barrier is created due to the density and saltiness of the Atlantic Ocean. This barrier is the same as the one we mentioned before. There are many other examples of these kinds of phenomena, but the most impressive one by far is the one of the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. While we now know what causes it, we will never get tired of looking at the two divided oceans. This is by far the most impressive phenomenon that occurs on Earth. It leaves us wondering how they manage to look as if something physical is dividing the oceans. So. What are your thoughts on this amazing natural wonder? Are you baffled? We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Well, that's all for this video. We hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you so much for taking a look at this interesting phenomenon, and we'll see you in our next video.